Hello, James from my pup, my British supply. So I thought I'd do a video on what we do for our puppies in terms of medications. There's a lot you can do yourself, quite legal to do, that can really save you a ton of money. Now, please remember, I'm not a vet. Um, I'm, a, I'm an electrical engineer, but I do have been raising puppies for a long time. But all the information I give you here is purely at your own, you know, you can't come back and complain to me if, if, if I've given you some information you don't like. So I would say about anything that you get on the internet, go research it from a couple of different places and make sure that what you're being told seems to make sense. So like again, please don't come back and sue me, but I'm giving this information out just to help people out for no other reason at all. So everything that I say, I believe is correct, but it does not mean that it is correct. So, you know, fair warning. All right. <clears throat> so... Puppies. So there's two things that you're going to see that, that, that are, are common puppy complaints, and they both result in diarrhea that can be pretty bad, it can be pretty mucousy, it can be pretty bloody, it can smell kind of funky. And the two things that typically puppies get, the two most common things are either coccidia or giardia, and they're pretty easy to treat. Um, so the first thing is, is that we treat all of our puppies with Nemex 2, we buy this from the vet, but you can get it at places like uh, um, Pet Revival, probably Vet Revival, a lot less expensive on the internet. This bottle here, I think is, you know, it's, it's a couple of hundred bucks. It's, you don't need much of it, but it's not cheap. Anyway, um, we give Nemex 2, and we give puppy wormings that, well, let me start something else. When a puppy's born, it's got no bacterial infections at all. It's sterile. But the moment it starts the nursing, it gets colostrum from its mother, from its mother's milk, that contains various different kinds of bacteria and antibodies. And also, is likely to be exposed to the, uh, the mama's feces. And those are going to have uh, gut parasites um, that can be, you know, can be beneficial and they can be harmful. And, and by the way, if you look at yourself, it's hard to believe this, but more of you is not you than you more of you ends up being bugs and parasites than is actually what you are. So, you know, we all think of like bugs and parasites as being bad things, pathogens and all this, but for the most part, they're actually beneficial and actually we have to have them in our bodies and without them, we wouldn't live two days, for real. So, you know, we sometimes get a little bit anal, I think, about, you know, parasites. Remember, there's lots of good parasites and they're in your body right now and it's all about keeping the right parasites in there and not the wrong ones. And when you don't do things like take antibiotics, what it does is it can wipe out a lot of the flora and fauna in your gut and give the opportunity for the not so good parasites to all of a sudden take over and get you in trouble. All right, so a common thing, so puppies, when they're born sterile, but they start to get the local parasites in their guts, and, it, and that happens very soon after birth, and there's not a thing you can do about it. But there are two common things that you do want to treat for. The first one is worms. Puppies get worms. Round worms, hook worms, flat worms, tape worms. These are things that puppies are very likely going to get, and I would recommend that you start worming your puppy at two weeks and do it every two weeks thereafter. And the safe stuff that we use for the first two and four weeks of their life is to use Nemex 2. This product is very safe. Uh, you said one-time application, uh, and, and, it, and it says on here exactly what to do. I think it's, uh, well, I'm not going to tell you the dosage. You should look it up, because otherwise there'll be mistakes made. Go look at the dosage up. Just Google Nemex 2 dosage puppy, and you'll find out. But you don't need very much of it. It's just a one-time dosage. Do it every two weeks. Then after that, when they get to be six weeks old, then there's a couple of products that are well-known and loved, and they're, Panicure is one of them. It's exactly the same as this stuff right here. It's goat worm. It's fender bendazole, safeguard. You can buy that in a tablet form and it costs you an arm and a leg from the vet. It is exactly the same, same stuff as this stuff right here. It's in a liquid form. We put it in a syringe. And uh, again, I write down the dosage on my bottle so I don't have to go look it up all the time. But this one says it's one cc or one milliliter for every five, every five pounds of dog. So if you had a five pound puppy, guess what? gets one cc and you do this for a few days and I, I, I forget now but I think it's three to five days you want to do this and it's certainly free anyway uh, and you won't have the puppies don't dislike it you won't have a hard time in this stuff they by the way they love they just slurp this stuff up um, but uh, I, I go to this and the reason I go to this is it kills it's 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 very safe but you don't use this on puppies that are less than six weeks old um, 
And by the way, I don't treat uh, pregnant uh, mums unless I need to. If I've got some infestation going, then I'll treat them. I stop all of my normal medications for pregnant mums because I'm just always concerned about, you know, what might be going on. But I mean, if you've got a dog that's in trouble, then absolutely go to the vet and decide what medication it needs. But if, if there's a healthy, happy dog, I just stop giving heart medications, I stop giving worm medications and all those things until after the puppies are born. All right. So this doesn't just kill worms, it also kills the Giardia parasite. So we're going to talk about that next. So these two products, Albon, love it, Safeguard, um, I would buy this, you can buy it in smaller, smaller containers. This thing here is probably about a hundred bucks worth, but I tell you what, that'll last you a long time. That's many, many, many litters of puppies right there. And then, by the way, the way we administer that is simply with a syringe. Let me get over here and grab a syringe. And I buy syringes, by the way, at a, at a hundred a time. I buy these on Amazon or eBay. It costs me about ten dollars for a box of a hundred of these. That's what I go through so, so, much, so much. Especially with my breeding, um, I go buy these. So, 5cc syringe, great. Suck up what you need. And just squirt into the puppy's mouth carefully. Um, Alright, so those are the two products for worming. Out of the way. So, we just mentioned something else. Um, we mentioned Giardia. And Giardia is, there's two parasites that you'll see that, besides worms, there's two parasites that you're going you're gonna to come across. If you do much of uh, having puppies, you're actually going to see it. And that is uh, um, Giardia and Coccidia. They're both parasites, they're both bacteria that live in the gut and they are, they're not present necessarily in all dogs, but the majority of dogs have those, gut, those parasites in their gut, but they're kept under control and they are kept down to a level they don't cause any problems to the dog unless it gets into a stressful situation. Illness, you know, it gets taken away from its family or its siblings. So, I very, I just about routinely treat for this stuff because if you don't, you're likely to have a problem with it. So let's talk about coccidia. So the common way to treat for coccidia is you get a product called metrobendazole. It's a antibiotic. Uh, you don't need very much of it, and again, you you'll get this from your vet. And this is a 200, 500 milligram tablet, and you hardly need any of that to treat a puppy, and you treat the puppy for like three to five days. Um, so it's called Flagyl is another name for it. But you can buy this if you go to Amazon. You can buy a product called Fishzole, and Fishzole is Metronidazole, same product, Metronidazole, but it's not FDA approved. It's for fishes, but it's exactly the same thing. And I bet you money that it goes down exactly the conveyor belt in the same products that are being used for you and I to use versus the ones you put in your fish tank. So you can buy this from your vet, or if you want to do it really, if you're just doing a little bit, go to your vet, fine. But if you've got many puppies and you do this very often, go buy some fish salt. It's a tablet again. It's exactly the same thing. Just look up the dosage and, and, and give the appropriate amount. Um, and by the way, while we're talking about these things that, uh, that are available that you can't buy over the counter, so here's another one. This is called Fish Flex. This is Ciflaxin. It's an antibiotic that you cannot buy over the counter, but you can buy exactly the same thing to go into your fish tank. So I, I'm not telling you that you should go use this for yourself, or necessarily you should even use it for your puppies, but I'm just pointing out that these products, here's another one right here, fish pen. Guess what fish pen is? Fish pen is penicillin. That's exactly what this is, and it tells you right on the label. Penicillin, right there. You can't buy penicillin over the counter, but you can buy penicillin over the counter to go into your fish tank. So, you know, this is what I use. If you want to use it, great. If you don't, go to the vet and go, go, go pay more and get some of it that's, you know, FDA approved. But I think they're probably, this is probably exactly the same thing as the penicillin that you buy. And there's another one called Fish Mox. Guess what that one is? That's a moxicillin. So the ones that I know of are Fish Flex, Ciflaxin, Fish Mox, a moxicillin, Fishazole, Metronidazole, and uh, fish pen penicillin. You can go get those things, and then uh, you know, ten dollars for a bottle of silly stuff, and there you've got it. All right. So let's see, where were we here? We were talking about giardia. That's right. We talked about giardia. So the common treatment for giardia is to use a metronidazole or to use uh, a flagyl. The same product. It's a, a it's an antibiotic. But it turns out that there's a lot of, ex uh, of, of, of testing that's been going on now in the United States using toltrazuril. There it is right there. And that product right there is for horses. And it is 
pretty inexpensive and you don't use very much of it. It's like 0.1 of a cc per pound. And it's a single time type, one time treatment and it gets rid of, um, um, now I've got myself confused now, this is, this is the coccidia, I'm sorry, we're, we're off top topic here a little bit. We're, we're back to this, sorry, we're back to this. So if, if you're treating for Giardia, you're going to use metronazole tablets. This also, by the way, Safeguard also treats um, uh, Giardia, but I don't think it does it as well as this. But if you have Giardia, happy to tell, when you do a fecal sample, if you've got a microscope, you can do it yourself, you can do what's called a flotation. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to your vet and have them diagnose it for you. Um, but pretty common thing, if the vet comes back and says your puppy's got Giardia, don't go into a panic, just start treating the puppy and all will be fine. If you don't treat it, now that's a whole different story. A puppy can get in trouble because it's not getting nourishment and it can actually you know, do some damage to, it, to its gut. So get a handle on it, get ahead of it, do the right treatment and everything will be fine. All right. So cop, so G, um, Giardia, common thing that you will see, especially if you've got a lot of dogs together, if, they, if your dogs go to a dog park and start sniffing on other feces, guess what, they're likely going to have Giardia, and they'll probably have it under control, but puppies, not so much. Puppies don't have the same immune system that older dogs do, and they can get in trouble. So the other common thing that you'll see is, uh, is coccidia, and coccidia, again, is a gut parasite. Same symptoms, diarrhea, loose stools, Puppies that aren't putting weight on, this is a typical thing, might be vomiting, it's another thing that can happen, I, don't see, I haven't seen that personally, but I mean, apparently that's another symptom. But the, the, the normal treatment for that is to use a product called Albon. And uh, this is, you treat this for like three to five days, and the instructions on how, how to give it, you give more for the initial dose, and then you give half the amount for every day thereafter for like five days. And it uh, works pretty well, but it's not, I'm not just really enamored with this product, but I definitely use this in younger puppies. I don't use, this is fine to use on puppies that aren't six weeks old. But after they're six weeks old, uh, I use this. Coltralzeril. Coltralzeril. And that is actually for horses. And you don't give much of it, 0.1 of a cc per pound. It's pretty inexpensive. And this kills coccidia. Bang! One time. There's no getting rid of the eggs and all this. This just flat kills it, and it kills it for at least a week and probably two weeks. So you can treat a puppy every two weeks with this and totally get rid of coccidia. So this is an off. This is an off. Uh, uh, an off-brand use. This is not. This is not designed to be used for, for for puppies. But if you go look at this, you'll find there's lots of people, including me, who are doing this and having great results with it. And there's been papers where people have used this product, and it really works really well. In Europe it's used, in Australia it's used, but it's not an approved thing for the use of this in the United States. So again, do your own research and decide whether you want to go, you know, use an, a, 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 an off-label use of the product. All right. Um, oh, something else. So here we go, another one. So we, we use this quite a bit, especially in older dogs. It's a probiotic. So we give these, these chewies to our dogs every few days. They love it. A little chewy, probably you could eat it too. Just a probiotic, supposed to put in good bacteria back in your gut. I, I'm a little skeptical as to, it's kind of expensive, it's like 15 bucks for that, 20 bucks for that. I'm a little skeptical as to how good this really is, but it can't hurt, I don't think, so, you know, we give it. Alright, so that's that one. Uh, heartworm medication. So there's heartworm medications out there, there's things that you can, patches you can put on dogs. We use Ivermex. And uh, it's kind of expensive, but it goes an awful long way. That little bottle there will last you a long, 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 long time. And it's got a pretty good shelf life, too. So Ivermec, we give this to our dogs about once a month. And you can go read up about that on the internet, about how to use it. But basically, it's such a small amount. I take what I need for my dogs, and I put it in some, uh, some orange juice and some Coca-Cola, so I've got more volume to work with, and I work out how many how much I give to each dog and I go around with a syringe and squirt it in their mouth. You don't inject, you just squirt it in their mouth. And by the way, this is also effective to be used for things like mange, but um, that's a whole different subject and um, you know, mange is one of those things that the, the dogs are supposed to suppress it and be okay with it, but dogs sometimes, especially when they get to be six months old, I've seen this happen before where a dog gets in trouble with mange. And I've affected, I've, I had a lab one time that got mange 
And this was very effective. I mean, it actually wiped the mange out. The dog was absolutely fine, and its immune system kicked in after that, and it was fine. But, but mange can be a killer of dogs, and so, again, if you're going to use this for things other than... Go do your research. I'm just showing you this product so you know it's available. It's a very inexpensive way of treating lots of dogs very quickly. Ivomet. It's used in cattle. Normally injected into cattle for parasites that you can just squirt into the dog's mouth the right dosage. Okay, let's just talk about shots. Okay, so we give puppy shots. You can give your own puppy shots. And the least expensive way to do is to buy these on the internet, like uh, um, Animal Revival, places like that. It'll always come in a, it'll always come in a cool pack. It has to be kept cool. What you don't use gets to stay in the refrigerator. Take it out of the refrigerator. It's a two-part product where you suck the liquid up from one with a syringe and you squirt it into the powder form on the other side, shake it up and squirt the, suck the whole thing back into the syringe, and then you just take a bit of skin on the back of the dog's neck, an alcohol wipe and clean that area, just stick it into that little fold of skin and just press the plunger. And you're going to have, you're gonna have about, oh, I don't know, it's going to be about a cc of material that you're squirting in. Very easy to do. You can do it yourself. You can do rabies shots as well, but you will not get a rabies tag if you do it yourself. So we let our vet do all of our rabies shots because we want to have certificates to show that we've got rabies shots. But you can actually do puppy shots yourself. You start that at six weeks, but typically it's every three weeks, six, nine, twelve weeks to do those. So typically our puppies leave here by the time they're about ten to twelve weeks old. Typically they've had their third shot. They've certainly had their second shot. And we, by the way, don't want our puppies to leave until they're ten weeks old. We want to have the the, the Six week shot and a twelve and a nine week shot and then a week's rest to make sure everything's fine. I've never seen a reaction in a dog given a shot, but I mean you do hear about this. Uh, but anyway, use a fresh needle and syringe uh, every time you uh, you inject a puppy. Don't start sharing needles; it's not a good idea. So where do you get needles from? Where do you vet? There may be a, uh, a supply horse supply place, you know, farmer's place. They'll have them. I buy these, you can't buy them on Amazon anymore, but apparently Costco still sells them, you can certainly buy them on eBay, but I buy a hundred at a time, and uh, I, the needles that I really like for everything, are one inch, 22 gauge needles, and they're pretty fine, uh, it's about $12 for a box of a hundred, dirt cheap, so same place that I go get to go get my uh, um, syringes, right, if you're drawing blood, this is great for drawing blood by the way, same, so if you're, if you're drawing, why would you draw blood? You might we draw blood because we do progesterone tests to find out when a dog's ready to be bred. And that's the product I've got videos on this guy right here, Target Test. So that's a great product as well. Recommend that, highly recommend that. Um, all right, enough of that. Enough of that. Um, wellness. What is this? I forget. This is Provecto. This is interesting. So this is for ticks, and it gets great reviews, and it's expensive but I found a way to cut my cost down significantly. So, you can buy this for a toy, a medium-sized dog, a large dog, or an extra-large dog. And guess what? The cost of the medicine is identical. But there is a hell of a lot more of this medicine in a tablet for a large dog than there is, is one for a chihuahua. And when you look at this thing, you will see that it's completely uniform. There's not like a little gel thing in the middle of it. When they make this, they make it in a big vat, and then they make these pellets. And so what I do is I take this for a large dog, extra large dog, and I quarter it up, and I give it to my Frenchies. And so I just cut my cost down in, in, in a, you know, I forget what this stuff is. It's like 40 bucks or something. But I can do it for 10 bucks. So I quarter this up. Should you do that? I don't know. Go ahead and, you know, do your own research. Be smart about it. You know, but, but honestly... And it's very safe stuff, by the way, for vet It's a very good product. So I like this product a lot. But I wanted to show you that in terms of how you can... Sometimes... <laughs> I do this for myself. When I take medication, I'll go buy the strongest dose I can, and I'll quarter it or halve it or whatever I need to do. Because typically, to go buy 500 milligrams or something is exactly the same as 100 milligrams. It's just five times as much in one. And if you want to take 100 milligrams, you just cut up the fifth, and off you go. You can do exactly the same thing. So anyway, well that's, that's it for this. All this information is for you to use, but not to come back to me if you don't like the results. I'm not a vet, uh, so please you know, use this wisely. If you're not sure about what I'm saying, go research it, go Google it, make sure that you agree with what I'm saying, and certainly as far as dosages are concerned, make sure you get your dosages right. Most of these medications are very, very safe. 
um, and you can really can get more than you should, but, but, get it right. This one here, this one here is one that you do absolutely want to get right. You can get in trouble if you give too much of this. But these other things, like Albon and Safeguard, are just some very, very safe medications. You really can get more than you should be okay. But it doesn't mean you should... So pay attention to detail. Um, anyway, from Love My Pops and My Greatest Supply, the best of luck with your puppies. Bye-bye.